video, let me show you how to take a scrap piece of leather plus extra beads and buttons to make this hair scrunchie or bracelet using the AccuQuilt Critters die. Stay tuned! Hi everyone, I'm Ebony Love of Quilt Possible and in today's video we're doing just a quick and easy project to make a bracelet or a hair scrunchie from some found objects. To make this project I used a spare hair elastic, about 12 inches of 12 gauge wire, I have 12 crystal plastic beads in two different sizes, a button and an elbow patch that's made of suede. I'll also be using the Go Baby to demonstrate this along with the Critters die. And on this die, we're actually going to be using the butterfly shape that you see outlined on the bottom. To handle the leather, you'll also need a metal awl. This is actually a, st a stiletto that I'm using as an awl, but you really just need something that's got a strong point that will allow you to poke holes in the leather where you need it. And then I also have a pair of needle nose pliers which is I use for jewelry making uh, but is also helpful for manipulating the wire. The beads that I have are beads that I've just been collecting um, over time. I don't make very much jewelry anymore but I never know when I'm going to need some of these things for my projects. And the buttons, I found this pack of buttons actually at my local Staples. So you never know when you'll walk into an office supply store or a hardware store and find something really neat for crafting. This leather elbow patch, it's actually suede. The pack of elbow patches that I got came two to a pack and a lot of just regular uh, local craft stores will carry these but you can also order them online. They have holes punched on the outside edge, but we really disregard those on the outside edge because uh, they're, most of them are going to get cut off anyway, so we're going to need to punch new holes. When you're making this project, you can only run one layer of leather through at a time, so don't get carried away. Um, if you're making these, you'll have to make them one at a time. And what you'll want to do is align the leather patch over the butterfly shape and with the size of this patch it is almost exactly the same width as uh, or same height as the butterfly on the die so you might have to wiggle it around a little bit to make sure that it is completely covered it's completely covering the shape what I like to do when I run this through the go is to run it through with the blank end first. So the, the shapes that I'm not using, I'm going to run those through first. And what that does is it really just helps to grab the mat and the die and pull it through without having to worry about getting the leather started on the other end because it's pretty close to the edge. So you might find it easier to actually start cranking from the opposite end. And one thing to, to note is that when you're doing cutting, most of the mats have these holes in them uh, at the end for hanging. You don't want that to be positioned over, your, over the shape that you're cutting because then you won't cut through the shape all the way. So I'm going to get this started. And I'm sitting down here so it, it might be a little bit more challenging for me to crank this through when you get to the leather spot. So it might be easier if you were to stand up and crank this. All right. So we've got that. I'm going to move the go out of the way because I need this work surface here. All right, so we lift this up. So here's my butterfly all cut out. What's nice about leather is that the edges are finished and so I don't have to worry about them fraying. Now I am going to use my mat here and at this point we're going to be using the the awl or the uh, point turner to punch a couple of holes in the center. So what I'm doing here is I'm punching a couple of holes inside the, the center here, inside the body part, um, and that's going to make two holes for me to pass my um, wire through. 
So this does take a little bit to get it started because the leather is pretty tough. So um, do what you can to get that hole started. You don't need a very big hole, but you do want to be careful that you don't stab yourself. So you can wiggle it from the top or wiggle it from the bottom, but some kind of way you need to make yourself two holes. All right, so I heard one, and there's two, all right. So it does take a little bit of wiggling, but now I have two holes that my wire is going to pass through. So I'm going to actually do this in two steps. One is to use the button, and this is, I believe this is a three-quarter inch button that I have in my hands here. I want to run one end of the wire through one hole, and then I'm going to lay the scrunchie, or the uh, hair elastic, on top of that wire, and I'm going to create a loop and run the wire through the second hole. So what I'm doing is I'm basically stringing the elastic, can you see that, on a loop of wire on the other side. So I'm going to pull that through and balance this out. Okay, so that's what's going to keep my elastic on one side. And then before I close this up, I'm going to then thread the button through on the other side. So this is going to keep, um, it's going to hide the wire to a certain extent and it's going to help stabilize that elastic on the other side. So once I have that, I'm actually going to take, because this wire is a little heavy gauge, I'm going to use my pliers to create one twist. So I only need to go around once with this wire to just tighten that up. So now you can start to see that taking shape a little bit and because I'm using a fairly uh, thick wire it's allowing me to to really shape these antenna how I want them to be so if you use um, and the the gauge wire that you use is really going to depend on your beads too my beads are pretty heavy so I wanted to use a heavy gauge wire because I don't want them flopping around so much but if you use lighter gauge uh, or uh, smaller beads, then you can use the lighter gauge wire. So as I mentioned, I've got two different sizes of crystal beads. So I'm threading three of the larger beads onto one side of the antenna, like so, and then three of the smaller ones on top. So I am creating an antenna that has um, some variation to, to its shape. Once I get to the end here, I need to create a loop to close that off. So I'm going to use my pliers to bend a loop around, and this is of course longer than I need it to be, so I'm going to bend a loop at the end of this, and then I'm going to clip it. Um, I have a pair of, uh, of wire cutters here, and I'm going to clip that about a quarter inch down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pliers to insert the end of this wire back into the hole of the bead and kind of use the pliers to push that down in. So that's going to make it so that I get a round loop at the top and my beads are not going to fall off. So then all I need to do is just repeat that same step on the other side and I get this uh, butterfly scrunchie with, shape, with shaped antennas that I can kind of shape any way I want. And if I had longer hair, I could wear this as a ponytail holder, um, but I like to wear it as a bracelet. I think it's kind of a, a neat thing. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Have fun with all of your odds and ends. Happy quilting! <laughs>